Welcome to another episode of the Consistency Corner podcast. And in today's strategic shift, we are going to talk about leveraging LinkedIn. And I'm going to be honest, I am in a LinkedIn experimentation phase right now as I record this episode and kind of mapped out what I wanted to talk to you about today for the Consistency Corner. And funny story, like let's go back to when I first started my company and my brand. I was still working in corporate and I was posting on LinkedIn a little bit here and there, like just a touch because I was, again, still working in corporate, but also had kind of the side hustle going on, trying to figure out what I was doing in terms of marketing consulting, marketing coaching, and it was leveraging LinkedIn a little bit. Well, when the time came and I made the decision to resign from my corporate job, Obviously, it was like, okay, we got to go all in because now it's really time to fill my calendar as I've got increased capacity to take on clients. And so I doubled down on LinkedIn and started posting more frequently. I created a company page for the Consistency Corner, started posting from my own personal profile to my network, sharing what the Consistency Corner was doing and what my brand was all about. And within a month of resigning from my corporate job, landed my first client from my LinkedIn posts. Now I am like not a gatekeeper and I'm going to be transparent here. That client already knew me personally. We were a personal connection. This person knew I existed, but they found out what I was doing because of LinkedIn and reached out to me because of LinkedIn, because what the consistency corner did solved a need that that client had. And that's one of my favorite clients that I work with still today. So over the past couple of years, I have kind of gotten away from LinkedIn and spent most of my time on Instagram. And I'll maybe like dabble in a LinkedIn post now and then, but like I don't post anything for the Consistency Corner as a brand. When I post stuff for myself, um, my own profile, it's, you know, kind of been throwing spaghetti at the wall. I haven't had a strategic plan behind it. And so as we went into 2024 and I'm unveiling some new offers and relaunching the agency with CMO strategy and done for you implementation, I realize uh, my ideal client is over on LinkedIn, Ruthie. So maybe we should go over there and hang out a little bit and practice what I preach and leverage the platform where my ideal audience is actually hanging out. So you will see. I have a nine grid up over on Instagram because I'm not spending as much time there. And that's a great way to leverage a nine grid is when you're doubling down and working on a new strategy and new platforms. That's what we're doing with LinkedIn. So because I've made the decision to really go all in on LinkedIn, I've been doing a ton of research and I want to share with you my findings and maybe see if that helps inform a strategic shift in your marketing strategy. And these are things that I have found through research through work with my current clients, things that I'm trying for my own brand and conversation with friends and colleagues. And there's a lot to dive into. And I was kind of considering whether or not this should be a multi-part series to make it actionable, but we're just going to have a conversation. I'm going to talk to you about what I'm finding. I'm going to share some best practices. And if you have further questions, shoot me a DM. Let's have a conversation about it. We can talk one-on-one about what works for your business. Um, But I want to share what I've been finding with you and see if this is a strategic shift that might be a good next step in your marketing plan. And the first thing is to say is, did you know that LinkedIn actually has over 774 users across the globe? So people are on LinkedIn. Now, 1.4 1.4 billion people are on Instagram. So about half the amount of people are on LinkedIn than Instagram. But the last statistic I read, and this was a year or so ago, so I, I don't have an updated stat, but as of a year or so ago, I had read that less than 1% or right around 1% of daily LinkedIn users actually post on LinkedIn. So we're saying there's 774 million users but like most of those people are just consuming content. They're lurking. They're not creating content. So it's not so noisy in there. There's less competition and there's actually a better chance for your content to be shown to the right people. Studies have shown that LinkedIn has the longest lifespan for a piece of content, including, you know, weeks after you've published it. You could publish something and weeks later, someone in your network or someone in your network's network shares it 
and it starts to get even more reach than when you originally posted where Instagram, you pretty much have 24 to 48 hours. So LinkedIn definitely gives you more legs and a longer lifespan for your content, which means your content is going to work harder for you in a smarter way. So you have, you can create less content. The other thing to think about with LinkedIn before we get into some of the best practices is I want to talk to you about the difference between a LinkedIn profile and a LinkedIn business page. So you as a human being, as a person has a LinkedIn profile. Me, Ruthie Starrett has a LinkedIn profile. My business, The Consistency Corner, has a LinkedIn page. So there's profiles for people, there's pages for companies. The algorithm does favor content from profiles, but that's not to say that content from pages isn't important. And I've actually been trying to think of a really good analogy to lay this out for you because you all know that I love a good analogy. And what I think of it as your profile is more like the front porch. Like everybody's going to see it. They're going to drive by and see it. The page is the back porch. Less people are going to see it. Like the people that are interested in the front porch and the person might dig in and find out and check out the back porch and the backyard. And like, that might not be the best analogy, but it's the best I could come up with right now. So hopefully that makes it make sense. A profile can be private. And in fact, you probably see that a lot of times CEOs, top executives, people that like don't want to be contacted on LinkedIn will have a private LinkedIn profile, meaning that you have to connect with them and they have to accept you in order to view their content and engage with them on the platform. That I think is is changing, especially in the world of personal branding, where I think people are using their profiles more publicly and you're more likely, especially as a business owner or an entrepreneur to have a public profile. But you want to just make sure we're thinking about those two things separately, your public profile, you as a person. And again, you can make it private, but if we're talking marketing here, I don't know why we're making it private. And then your business page. And a lot of business owners that I've talked to, particularly business owners who have been successful through referrals or their own personal network or their own sales and leadership skills, start businesses and the company profile, the company, I'm sorry, the company page doesn't get a lot of attention. But it is important to set it up because as people are discovering you and checking you out, and maybe you're a speaker somewhere or somebody refers you or you're tagged in a post, people are curious and they want to see what's going on. So they might check out your profile, think, hmm, I want to know more about this person and I want to know more about their company. And they're going to click on that company page. So we want to make sure that there's content in both places. And there's actually different strategies for content in both. So if you're just starting out with LinkedIn, my recommendation would be focus on content on your personal profile first. Get comfortable with that. Get consistent with that. Have a company page set up for your page if you don't already. And then down the road, we can layer in content for the company page, but the profile is going to get you more reach. And again, the the algorithm favors profiles. So let's prioritize that. So let's talk about content for your profile and how to optimize your profile. So the first step, and one thing that you can do is turn on creator mode and you can like go to YouTube or LinkedIn itself, or even Google and put in like how to turn on creator mode in LinkedIn. It's very easy. I'm not going to try to explain it step-by-step because this is a podcast and it's easier if you can see on the screen, but turn on creator mode. What this does is it gives people an opportunity to follow you without connecting with you. They can also connect with you, but they can follow you, meaning I want to hear from what this person has to say. I want to see their updates because as a connect a a creator on LinkedIn, you're positioning yourself as a thought leader. You're positioning yourself as someone who has something to say in your industry and a way to serve the community through your content. So you're definitely going to make sure that you are turning on creator mode, and then optimizing your profile photo, your cover photo, and your bio. Now, 
your bio, I think for years and years and years, what most of us saw is that it just like automatically defaulted to our most recent job. And even as an entrepreneur, your most recent job might be founder or CEO or president or whatever of X company. And that's fine. But you can actually put so much more in that bio, including keywords that people might be searching for. And the other thing that you can do with your bio that actually my friend Kendall Cherry recommended, who she has seen some awesome results from leveraging LinkedIn in 2024 is that the very first words in that bio need to be something a little bit different or a little bit like not thought provoking, but like, oh, that's different. Eye catching. That's the word I'm looking for. So for example, my bio, I have my name, obviously, Ruthie Starrett, and then streamlined branding, marketing, and content, simplifying social media, CMO and marketing strategist, digital marketing agency owner, and podcast host of the Consistency Corner podcast. So you can see right away, there's a lot of things you can put into a bio, which many of those things are keywords. But that first line, streamlined branding, marketing, and content. When I comment on someone else's post on LinkedIn, that is what they are going to see under my name. And that is what I want the consistency corner and myself as a marketing strategist to be known for streamlined branding, marketing, and content. And so that's what I put as the first line of my bio. So really think about what you do to help your clients, what you want to be known for, what's your QBR or your queen bee role as in reference to the book clockwork because that's what you want to make sure that people are seeing when they are discovering or connecting with you. And let's talk a little bit about comments. That is a great way to actually connect with people on LinkedIn and increase your reach without pumping out content. My friend Kara Steinman, who is the host of the Ravel Radio podcast, actually was a guest on my show and talks a lot about connecting with people on LinkedIn and using that to grow your audience. And it works, you know, which I referenced my conversation with my friend Kendall, you know, she comments on people's posts and then connects with people in those comments and starts conversations and has landed several clients this year from that strategy, because the connection is what actually gets the algorithm having new eyes and new people on your content. And you can start to make a name for yourself as a thought leader just by leaving thoughtful and insightful comments on other people's content. And that doesn't mean we're leaving like the thumbs up emoji and the like, cool, like love your content, but like something actually thought provoking or something insightful or something that truly adds to the conversation the way you would if you were like at a dinner party or at a networking event. And then those people who follow the person who originally posted are now seeing your content. And now you can see how that line under your name, if it's compelling and interesting and different, could inspire to somebody to check you out and be like, oh, who's this person? What do they have to say? What's going on with them? And then that brings us to the importance of your about section. The link, which you do get a link at the top of your profile when you are a creator, and that can be to your work with me page, that can be to a free resource, it can go to so many different things. But then also the featured section. So as a creator, you are able to pin or feature four, five, three, four, five, however many posts you want at the top of your profile. So when someone lands on your profile, they can see like on mine, oh, she's a podcast oh, host. Oh, here's a free resource that she offers. Oh, here's a really important piece of thought leadership and something that she wants to be known for. Like, these are the things that I chose. And you can change out those featured posts anytime, but it gives you an opportunity almost like on Instagram where we could do pinned posts to have the really important things at the top of your profile so people can quickly get to know you and learn all about who you are. So now let's get to the content because as someone lands on your profile because maybe they saw you in somebody else's comments or they're checking out who you are and they click on the profile to like learn more, kind of go down that rabbit hole of who is this person and what are they all about? They've read your bio, they saw your links, they saw your per- your featured posts and they're like, oh, I like what she has to say. I'm going to click that follow button so that I can hear more from her. So 
within your content, you want to think about having a strategy to put content out there that attracts, nurtures, and converts just like we do on every other platform. So attract strategy is like building awareness. And this is honestly sharing other people's content. Because when you share something that someone else posted with your own kind of comment, you do that like repost feature, you're getting in front of their audience as well. And you're getting in front of new people. Tagging people is an awareness strategy. So I actually did something a long time ago. I did a post where I called out a few of my favorite thought leaders on LinkedIn and tagged them and said like, hey, who do you love to follow? Who adds a lot of value to your feed? Just tagging three people gave me like 10x the reach on that post than I normally would. And so again, it just puts me in the conversation of other thought leaders in the industry and puts people who could potentially use my services, puts me on their radar because I am tagging and getting into the conversation and quote unquote, the rooms with the right people. So we're going to make sure that we're doing awareness strategies and sharing awareness content. Um, But then the meat of it, kind of the heart of it, that nurture content where we are sharing education, we're teaching, we're using the platform to inform and even moving down the funnel a little bit with decision type content where we maybe share the behind the scenes of working with a client. We future cast what it could look like when someone does work with this. And then just like the funnel where the smallest part is convert, the smallest type of content that we're going to share is a call to action to maybe opt into a freebie or work with us. It could be to follow if we're, you know, trying to kind of do a push for new followers, or it could be a call to action to engage where we're like actually asking questions and asking people to comment um, or subscribe to something or buy. So we've got awareness at very top of funnel. We've got nurture interest and decision making kind of that consideration state that we're speaking to and then taking action content. So making sure that we have a calendar, a content calendar where we're hitting those different pieces of content. And again, just like the marketing funnel, it, from top to bottom, it goes most to least. So we want to spend the most of our time on awareness, which is why we want to think about commenting and conversations even before creating content. Medium amount of time on nurture type content, adding value, creating interest, educating, helping people see what it could be like to work with you. And then the smallest amount of our time on those convert type posts. But I didn't say zero on those convert type posts. So that means we can't be afraid of being salesy on LinkedIn. It's okay to talk about our offers. It's okay to say that I have, you know, availability or I'm booking now or whatever it is, because we do want people to know that we're open for business. And so sharing that every so often is very important. Now, a note on the copy when you're writing those posts, I'm going to share um, from my friend, Brittany Ramsey, who is a really great person to follow on LinkedIn because she has used the platform really to build her coaching business. She is a professional in HR and does career coaching and career pivot coaching um, on the side, kind of one-on-one, has some group programs and does some guest speaking. But she built her entire business using LinkedIn while actually working in corporate. And so some of her top tips on leveraging LinkedIn include when you write your copy, think about starting with the trailer or a compelling hook. Then you're going to have the meat of the copy, the story, where you're adding the value, where you're shifting an insight, you're shifting perspectives, where you're sharing an insight. And then you have a short summary with a call to action. And that call to action could be go do this thing, engage, answer a question, or it could even just be a call to think. And after we sit down and we write out that content, go back and delete 30% of what you wrote. Because LinkedIn is not the place for fluffy content. It needs to be actionable, motivational, analytical, or challenging the status quo. It could share observations or comparisons. It could do some future casting or share lists because lists are really easy to um kind of digest for the reader, but it's not a place for long-winded, fluffy, wordy type posts. Long is okay if there's value and structure to the long post. 
And in terms of the length of posts, it's good to experiment with short posts and long posts. It's even worth experimenting posts with an image versus no image. You know, it's interesting because for a long, long time, images were not important on LinkedIn. And I think as people digest the content on the platform more on mobile versus desktop, images do become important because they help stop the scroll, they help catch the reader's attention, but they're not always necessary, especially with a compelling hook. That and that, you know, kind of trailer or first line of copy that encourages the reader to click that button that says show more to get to the bulk of the post. And then the last thing that I want to share is about hashtags, which how many should you use? Where do you put them? Um, typically three to five hashtags minimum is suggested, and you can certainly put them in the comments. You can also put them directly in your post. If you're using them strategically, I wouldn't necessarily recommend hashtag stuffing at the bottom of a post. If you want to do that and use a bank of hashtags, I'd put them in the comment. But if you're saying like, Hey, you know, we're talking about retail trends in 2024, I might use my take on hashtag retail in 2024 is blah, blah, blah. Like just an example, I'm getting the hashtag as a keyword in the top of the post because it's relevant. And then that's showing the algorithm. This is what I'm talking about, which means it's going to show it to people who are searching those types of hashtags and potentially also show it to people who engage with those types of hashtags because the algorithm is curating the content for them. The other thing that I would recommend before we move on to your business profile um, or your business page, sorry, for, for your personal profile is sharing some testimonials in the about section. So your personal about section does not just read like a resume. This is like your front and center place to put yourself out there as like, especially if you're a service provider, as a what it's like to work with me and or my company. And so within that about section, talk about who you are, talk about your mission, vision, and values, if it makes sense, and share some testimonials, or even the packages that you offer clients and a testimonial for each of those packages. So people can quickly see what it's like to work with you without going to your website. And if those things grab their attention, then they're more likely to actually go to your website and check it out. And, you know, we talk a lot about repurposing here on the consistency content, and it is absolutely okay to repurpose content from LinkedIn, or I'm sorry, from Instagram, from Facebook, from other platforms onto LinkedIn. But as you're digging in and you're starting out, just remember you're experimenting. You're experimenting to see what works for you. And you need to give those experimentations time. You need to give it time to collect the data to actually see what is moving the needle. So now let's talk a little bit about your company page. And if you have a large company with employees, absolutely you need a company page and your company page needs content. If you're a solopreneur or a small team, your personal profile is going to become even more important, but it is important to start building up your company page as well. And LinkedIn's best practices are actually two to five posts per week for a company page. So I would say if you're not posting at all on your company page, start with two a week, start with one a week, to be honest, like, let's be honest here. And you can schedule posts right in the platform. So if you could batch out four posts and do one a week for a month, boom, you're done. And what HubSpot actually recommends after studying the LinkedIn algorithm is that you follow the 532 rule for your company page, meaning five pieces of content that your company shares are actually shared pieces of content, meaning they're articles, they are other people's posts, they could be your own post. So like the consistency corner could share a post from Ruthie Starrett. And that counts as one of those five. So five shared pieces of content. So then you're not really even having to create original content for half of the posts you plan out for your company page. And the cool thing is the company page has a feature called um, suggested content where they actually give you 
like LinkedIn gives you trending articles or prompts for things that you could share. So you can use those for some of your five shared posts or your three original posts. So the 532 rule is five shared posts, shared pieces of content, three original pieces of content, which are going to be like thought leadership, educational style pieces of content, and two fun pieces of content. And the fun is where we're like sharing a funny meme or even a funny reel that you've repurposed or an employee announcement, you know, celebrating someone on your team or a birthday or anniversary, or even celebrating a client. If the client is okay with you tagging them and announcing them on LinkedIn, that could be a fun kind of piece of content. So five, three, two, five shared, three original, two fun to kind of build that personality and um, connection with your brand. Two to five posts per week are optimal, no more than once a day. And I would honestly say, I think one a week is fine. I'm just being honest, like, we, because even the content or the um, platform LinkedIn says is that the most important thing is consistency. consistency. So LinkedIn doesn't need round the clock publishing. It needs a consistent publishing schedule, which is what we talk about with everything here in the consistency corner, because the consistency is what builds trust. And that trust is what leads to relationships and relationships lead to sales. So choose a consistency that you can maintain. And maybe that means you're posting three times a week on your personal profile and one time a week on your company profile and try it out for a quarter and see how it goes. And then from there, can we increase our intensity? Do we need to change our consistency? What does that look like and what makes sense? And know that experimentation is okay because experimentation is what's going to give you data. You know, you might see right now, I am posting daily, Monday through Friday on LinkedIn. Well, it's because I'm experimenting. I'm trying to get data for what resonates, for what connects me with the right people, for what people engage with, what drives traffic back to my website, because we can use Google Analytics to see how much traffic is coming from LinkedIn when we are putting posts with links where people might be clicking that link in bio. And we can't get that data without taking some action. And so sometimes we're going to sprint and take more intense action in the beginning to get that data faster. So we talked a about a lot of things today. And honestly, you guys, I have like three more pages of notes that I could have shared, but I wanted to keep this pretty high level and actionable so that you could pull out one or two things to start trying today to leverage LinkedIn. So number one, come connect with me on LinkedIn. Say hello. Give me a follow. Comment on a post. I want to cheer for you and cheer you on. I will absolutely come over and engage with some of your content as well. And if you are curious about better leveraging LinkedIn in your marketing strategy and content plan, let's connect and let's have a brainstorming session together and talk about how the Consistency Corner can support you in either a content plan or marketing strategy and done for you implementation. Because that is one of the things that I do for some of my clients is I do their LinkedIn content for them, for both the company profile and, or company page. I'm going to like tongue tie myself. I'm trying to remember that. But for company pages and personal profiles. And sometimes having a marketing strategist in your back pocket and someone to go over those best practices or perspectives or just angles and ways of looking at things can be really helpful, especially when you're wearing a lot of other hats and the marketing hat isn't your primary hat. So I would love to partner with you and talk about ways that we can leverage LinkedIn in your marketing strategy for either your personal brand or your business brand and what that looks like based upon those business goals. So thanks for listening and we'll see you on the next episode.